Джонни нет. It's working. <clears throat> okay, now we are ready. Screen share. Well, okay. <clears throat> Admit. Let's start a slideshow from the current slide. Okay, we have talked about the advantages and disadvantages of the DSP in the previous week. Today, we are going to talk about the basic uh, DSP operations. I mean, what are the basic DSP operations? Now, as you know, uh, the basic mathematical operations are, for example, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and modulus. <coughs> the same thing here in, uh, in uh, digital signal processing, again, we have some operations. We are going to talk about it in this lecture. At the beginning, let us review uh, the some applications of the DSP. Well, areas of DSP are considerable in image processing, image processing, pattern recognition, robotic vision, image enhancement, facsimile, satellite weather, and animation. Admit all. Instrumentation and control, for example, spectrum analysis, position and rate control, position and rate control, noise reduction and data compression, and data compression. Well, speech and audio, speech recognition, speech synthesis, text to speech, digital audio and equalization. In the, in the military field, again, we have a wide range of applications for DSP, secure communication, radar processing, sonar processing, and missile guidance. Telecommunications. In the telecommunications, we have another application, for example, eco cancellation, adaptive equalization, separate spectrum, video conferencing, data communication. Again, we have wide range of applications in the biomedical field, for example, patient monitoring, scanners, 
EEG brain mapper, ECG analysis, X-ray storage, and enhancement. All of these are what are examples for the applications of the DSP. Now, going to talk about the DSP operations. What are DSP operations? Of course, basically, we have five kinds of DSP operations. As you know, when we have talked about the, say, my general purpose microprocessor 885, 886, and so on, all of these microprocessors, you can recognize uh, general instructions. I mean, you have, for example, transfer instructions. You have, for example, mathematical instructions. You have, uh, again, uh, logical instructions. I'm talking generally. In the DSP, we have basically five operations, which are what? These five operations are the following. Correlation, convolution, digital filtering, discrete transformation, and modulation. <clears throat> In When we talk about the convolution, of course, convolution will be used for what? Will be used to determine the output of a given system. Okay, now I will show you the screen. I'm going to share the, my tablet screen. Okay, now to be able to write down some important notes. Okay. Well, now, what do you mean by convolution? Uh, basically, we are talking about a system, say this system, this is the system, okay? This input of the system is X of N, output of the system will be Y of N, and uh, the impulse response of the system will be edge of N, okay? So three parameters we have, three parameters we have, x of n, edge of n, and y of n. Well, convolution y of n, y of n will be x of n convolved with edge of n. So the convolution will be used for what? Will be used to determine the output of a given system, of course, in time domain. This is the convolution process. Well, we have another operation or process which is called the correlation. Correlation, in the correlation, what we are going to do, we have the following say system, and we are going to feed two signals to the correlator or correlation x1, x2. Here we have correlation operation. Okay, now this is the output of the uh, correlation process. Of course, the output of the correlation will indicate important points. Whether we have two cases, okay? Now, case number one, we have X1 is similar to X2. Well, case number two will lead to what? Will lead to, for example, X1 is unlike or different from uh, X2. So the correlation process is used for what? Is used for either to determine the similarity of the signals. So may, we may have two similar signals, or we may have two different signals. In uh, communication, when we use correlation, means we are using correlation for what? To determine the friend signals or to determine the enemy signals, okay? So either they are the same or, or they are different. Well, 
this is the benefit of the correlation. Okay, so by now we have talked about what about the correlation and the the convolution of process. Well, now let me go to the digital filtering. Uh, digital filtering. Now let's talk about the digital filtering. Well. In the case of digital filtering, what will happen? Look at me, please, to understand what's going on. Basically, we have four kinds of filters, okay? Basically, we have four kinds of filters, as I'm going to show you now, okay? Now, this one will be the low-pass filter, okay? This one will be the high-pass filter, and this one is a band-pass filter, and finally, we have band reject filter. Okay, so four kinds of filter we have. This one is called low pass filter. Low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and band stop filter. Okay, band stop filter. These are the basic four kinds of the filter that we are going to use. Now, first of all, what do you mean by the what do you mean by the low pass filter? Low pass filter will pass low frequencies and will it will reject the high frequencies. Okay. On the other on the other hand, high pass filter we reject low frequencies, okay? Here we have the region for the, for the low frequencies. So these low frequencies will be rejected by the high pass filter and the high frequencies will be what? Will be uh, passed through the out, through the band pass filter. Okay, band stop filter, it will uh, passes a band of frequency, okay, and band stop filter to reject a band of uh, frequencies. This is about what about the filtering of the uh, DSP. Well, now we have another operation which is called the transformation. The transformation. Uh, as you know, uh, you have studied the Fourier transform and you have studied again the Laplace transform and you have used the uh, Laplace transform the solution of differential equations. The same thing we have in the discrete system or digital systems. Uh, in the digital systems, we have the following transformations, uh, DFT, DFT, And we have another transformation, which is called Z transformation. Z transform. Okay, so we have the DFT, discrete, uh, discrete Fourier transform, and the Z transformation. Of course, DFT will be used for what? To determine the magnitude and phase spectrum of a given signal. Look, please, here we have, this is F, and this one will be magnitude of edge of F, okay? So this represents the magnitude spectrum, okay? Magnitude, magnitude spectrum. Second one, <coughs> we have, Phase spectrum, again, X axis will be F and the Y axis will be the angle of edge of F, angle of edge of F. This is called phase spectrum, okay? So using the transformation, using the transformation, it will, helps us to determine the magnitude and phase spectrum of the signals. 
so up to now we have talked about what about about uh, convolution correlation digital filtering and transformation remaining will be what will be the modulation yeah. process okay now let us talk about the modulation process modulation as you know we have a three basic types of modulation which are the am modulation fm modulation phase modulation okay and of course we have uh, this about the analog modulation systems and we have digital modulation systems basic DS, uh, basic digital uh, digital uh, modulation systems are ask fsk and uh, psk modulation easily can be considered as multiplication process okay so here we have the message signal m of t and it will be multiplied by cosine omega ct to get what to get modulated signal modulated signal well this represents the modulated uh, signal well so modulation means what means multiplication in time domain okay up to now we have talked about the basic operations of the stop sharing this one yes now share well now going back to the slides Okay, in the slides, we talked about convolution, correlation, digital filtering, discrete transformation, and the modulation. Okay, this is about uh, what, what we said, uh, the uh, DSP operations. So when someone asks you, for example, what are the basic DSP operations? Easily, you can answer that there are five operations, convolution, correlation, uh, digital filtering, discrete transformation, and the modulation. This is about the this lecture again. Now I'm going to move to another lecture. By now we have a real example. I mean audio signal recording CDs. Of course, uh, this uh, example requires uh, information about the sampling. So I'm going to postpone these two slides, explanation of these two slides, up to uh, talking about the sampling theory. Well, let's go to another lecture, uh, which is uh, well. Uh, okay. Well, uh, we have another lecture. Well, okay. Uh, open. Okay, lecture number two. Look, uh, in lecture number two, it's a very important lecture. Why? It will contains the typical block diagram of the DSP system. Well, so look at uh, this uh, typical system. Of course, the typical DSP system is consists of the following block diagram. Uh, input filter, which is a low pass filter. Okay, ADC with sample and hold circuit, digital processor, D2A converter, and output filter. Of course, the output filter will be. Oh, I'm sorry. Very, very, very. Oh, it's easy. No, can I now? Ah, Shasha, what's that? Very, very. Ah, Bubora, Bubora, Ari. Okay. Typical DSP block diagram. Typical DSP block diagram is consists of the following blocks: input filter. ADC with sample and hold, a digital processor, D2A converter, and output filter. 
at the beginning, the input filter will be a low pass filter, or it's it's called anti-aliasing filter. Of course, we have a lecture about aliasing. Uh, second block diagram, second block will be ADC with sample and hold circuit. Analog to digital converter with a sample and hold circuit. In between, we have digital processor. This digital processor will perform convolution, correlation, filtering, transformation, and the modulation, okay? So the DSP operations, which we have talked about in the previous lecture, will be implemented by the digital After the filter, after the filter, the signal here is still is analog signal, okay? Signal at this point still is analog signal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Share no oh. Okay. Uh, input of the system have an input. Yes. Input of the system analog. It's analog signal. After passing through the filter, low pass filter, at this point, still the signal is analog. After passing through ADC converter, the signal becomes what? Becomes digital, X of N. Processing the signal using the DSP processor, the output will be Y of N again, still it's digital signal. Now using D2A converter, I'm going to use the D2A converter to reback the signal to the what? To the analog form. At, at this point, the signal is analog, but in the form of a staircase. I'm, I'm going to show you what is going on. And finally, we have an output filter, which is again a low pass filter, which will be used to remove a high frequency components in the signal. Of course, these points illustrate what we have talked about. The analog input filter is used to band limit the analog sig input signal prior to digitizing to reduce a lasing to be later, seen later. ADC converts, converts the analog input signal into a digital for wide band with signals or when slow ADC is used, it's necessary to proceed the ADC with a sample and hold circuit Although newer ADCs now have built-in sample and hold circuit. Now, here we have uh, some examples about the DSP processors. The heart of the system is shown in the digital processor, which is based on the either general purpose microprocessor, I mean the 886, 885, Pentium, and so on. All of these processors are called what? Are called general purpose microprocessor. We have a special purpose microprocessor, for example, DSP processors. These are belongs to the family of Texas Instrument or Motorola. Texas Instrument TMS 320C50 is a very widely used DSP processors or the Motorola DSP uh, 56000 or some other piece of the hardware. Okay, all of these will be done using a, a processor, DSP processor. The digital processor may implement one of the several DSP algorithms, for example, digital filtering, mapping the input X of N into the output Y of N. D2A converter converts the proceed, processed signal back into the analog form. The output filter smooths out the output of the D2A converter and removes unwanted high frequency components. Of course, to understand this point, I'm going to uh, switch uh, the screen to the uh, iPad screen again. Well, 
going back now let us talk about the basic block diagram of the DSP system now we said that at the input of the system sorry here we have x of t then it is followed by a low pass filter output of the low pass filter here will be the analog still output is what is analog now this one will be fed to the what analog to digital converter then this analog digital converter is fed to the what dsp processor after that we have d to a converter and another low pass filter to get what to get y of t the output of course this point is digital signal here again we have what a digital signal this is the basic block diagram of the what of the uh, dsp system now i'm going to talk about the output of d to a converter the output of the d to a converter then we are going to explain the benefit of this low pass filter as i think we have studied the fourier series and fourier transform in the second year class okay uh, in the second stage you have studied the Fourier series and Fourier transform so I am going to use the basic basic concepts of the uh, Fourier series to understand what's going on well going back to the output of the D to A converter well this is the DAC D to A converter and its output its output will be in the following form please look at the output of the d to a converter okay the output of the d to a converter will be in this form okay now what you can recognize look sudden changes from this level to its upper or from this level to the upper okay these are sudden changes either from high value to low value بلي سيدو بو بس اب دي تو اي اون اي تو دي يعني كو انا لو تو ديجيتال انا بدي لا لا دي تو اي اب دي تو اي اوت بوت اوف ذا دي تو اي اوت بوت اوف اوف ذا دي تو اي كونفرتر اي تو دي كونفرتر اي تو دي كونفرتر انالوج تو ديجيتال اب ديجيتال تو انالوج درست نوك اب ديجيتال ما كونفرت كارت بو انالوج اب نوك سيجنال انالوج اب the signal digital discrete not a continuous signal very as easy no cavity ever continuous signal very hobby yani discrete signal is available at what at discrete time instance okay very very hobby very hobby okay 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 discrete signal now Okay, this is a discrete signal. The signal values is only at what? At TS, 2TS, 3TS, 4TS, 5TS, and so on. Okay, the blue figure, uh, sorry, the yellow figure represents what? Represent discrete time signal, while the red one is represent a continuous signal or analog signal. Now, this is an analog signal, but we have a problem. What's the problem with this signal? This signal has what? High frequencies. Any sudden change, best very hope Rajaan. Any sudden change, look at a sudden change. Address the have a sudden change from say voltage four to voltage five. Okay. Fetch at an okay, have a debit is charity will pinch. Okay. This is a process called sudden changes. Any sudden change contains high frequencies. Okay, contains what? high frequencies now our objective is what to smooth the signal okay to smooth the signal so how we are going to smooth the signal if the if this signal this one okay if this signal 
is passed through a low pass filter at that time these high frequencies or high or uh, sudden changes will be what will be removed by using what by using a low pass filter okay look please so after passing this signal through a low pass filter we get such a signal okay so the benefit of the benefit of the low pass filter is to remove what is to remove the high frequencies from the signal please write down your names in the chat okay please write down your name in the chat Ababu attendance okay write down your names in the chat please okay well now this is about what about the output of the d2a converter and passing uh, this output through a low pass filter well after that we have uh, passed the uh, d2a uh, signal which contains high frequencies through a low pass filter to remove the high frequencies and to get what to get a uh, smooth output now going back to the uh, to the lecture slides okay <coughs> Well, now in some real real time applications, the data may already be in the digital form and doesn't doesn't need to be converted to an analog signal. For example, after processing, the signal may be stored where in in a computer memory uh, for later use. Okay, uh, or it may be displayed graphically on a display unit. In other applications. It may be required to generate signals gen digitally. Examples uh, of these are speech synthesis, digital frequency synthesis, and pseudo binary uh, sequence generators. Okay, these are examples for the uh, signals. Now I'm going to talk in detail about the process of A to D converter. Okay, we are going to talk about the A to D converter in detail. As was mentioned above, before any DSP algorithm, before any DSP algorithm, The signal must be in digital form. Most signals are in nature are in analog form. So we have to what we have to use the A to D converter to be able to process the signals using the DSP processor. Well, the band limited signal is the first sampled converting the analog signal into discrete time continuous amplitude signal. Okay, now again we have to uh, go to the ipad screen to illustrate what's going on well okay now Let me show you what's going on using the uh, sampling process or A to D converter. Now we are going to talk about the internal architecture of the what of the A to D uh, converter. Let's talk about
Okay. Uh, this will be the A to D converter. A to D converter contains a switch which will be closed every TS and then we have a sample and hold circuit. Sample and hold circuit, which is a capacitor C. Okay, now how it's work? I mean the, the 